cool. All righty. Welcome back, everyone, to the Westworld Theorycast. We're here for an initial reaction to the season one finale, The Bicameral Mind. My name is Axel. You can check us out on Twitter at WestworldDVR. You can email us, WestworldDVR at gmail.com. And you can check out our Facebook page, Westworld Theorycast where we're rocking out the theories and we'll still try to keep it alive over this uh, off season. We're going to have a couple more podcasts this week. Um, If you're new to the pod, welcome. We're getting a lot of late joiners. It's all good, baby. Um, And we are ready to talk. So let's just jump right in that. I fucking love that, man. I thought that that was just a fantastic, it was a movie. I mean, it was an hour and a half. It was like a movie. And I have with here with me here, of course, Mr. DJ Tim Hines. What do you think, Tim? Oh my goodness, that was the perfect finale, and I think we're going to be talking about this as a season of perfection in years to come, like as like the template, because this was it was it really was a movie. The first first whole nine episodes were perfect build up to this conclusion, and we got like. 90% of all the answers we wanted and now we get to go off in a completely different direction for the and we know there's more seasons coming up so it's really exciting. Oh, what a great episode. I loved it. This is the initial reaction cast and we're getting it out there, baby. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I agree. You know, um I mean, I want to just address uh right off the bat because it just continues. I know there was an article I think it was by Matt Zolder Seitz um, about um, like theorizing is ruining TV shows. And it's like, fuck you. Get another click, man. Even though I love that guy. He's fucking awesome. Um, Actually, I have to take away that fuck you for all the other awesome shit he's done. And it probably wasn't even him. I don't know. But anyway, the point is this. We are the Westworld Theory Cast. I, I heard some other podcasts this week being like, well, we don't want to talk about too many theories. You know, people don't like people fucking love it and they love this fucking show. And we're the Theory Cast and we love it too. But that doesn't mean that just because we were totally fucking wrong or went out there or didn't go far enough. Uh, the show was awesome. It's about quality, baby. It's not about whether we were right or not. Now, I think that. What I loved about this finale is that it wasn't crazy. The things that happened had been telegraphed to us through the show itself. And I don't think you had to be on Reddit to be understanding what was going on in the show. I I don't I think that they told a story, it was like a puzzle, but it was all there. So I think they did it perfectly. And this finale works. There's a couple things during the season that I think you could point a finger at and say that was a little bit more for the 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 overall um, trick or the or the story than it was um, for uh, to tell. I mean, to tell the story than it was for the story. That's going to happen. You know, you have to. You know, you have to pull some punches and you have to take some. And in the end, though. This just kind of worked out right down the line. Nothing. I wasn't completely shocked by anything except their, um, the care in which they told this final episode. That's actually what shocked me the most, how beautiful it was and, and how they really relied on the actors, um, I just thought it was fucking awesome. Yeah. I mean, aside from the crazy gunfight to get Maeve out, like that was the only real heavy action. Everything was so soft and it was all the face, facial expressions of all the the actors in the show from the hosts to the humans. Like everybody was giving cues to everybody else. There was awakenings, there was realizations and it was, it was me, you know, so welcomed because of all the cues we got all season. Like I didn't want to have to go into next ep- next season wondering, oh wait, maybe oh you know is this now we're kind of like we we have a, a a ground level where we're know we're playing from. Like we know the the template, like we know where to, where it's going. We know the rules. 
uh, and, and I love it. I love it. It, it, it. Mave the Mave stuff was so awesome, and the fact that that you know Bernard found out that that she was you know written, this whole thing was written for her makes you wonder then at the end did she come alive did she did she consciously choose to go back mm-hmm. and not go out in the world um she still has the capability cuz she doesn't have that in her but who knows where they could all go um the labs are all still there uh you know who, it, it, obviously we got you know some crazy answers like you know, it, it seems like Bernard made reference to mainland, so they're on an island somewhere. So if they somehow control everything, shut down that that you know transport system, they could really like group up and have their own thing. I mean, it's so exciting the, to think where the the AI could just do their own thing. But it really was beautiful. The music was so soothing, and everything just like it was like almost like a. a like a not uh, what do you call that? Not a nursery rhyme, but you, you know, uh, a lullaby, like putting yeah. a kid to sleep. Like it was very yeah. soft, and uh, I loved it. Yeah, that's great, man. Yeah, the music was awesome too. And another great use of Radiohead. If you know the song, which um, uh, the name escapes me at this point, um, but that's playing when kind of Maeve is on the train and, and it's just basically a song starts wake from your sleep. And it's just, it's about, you know, today we escape, we escape. I'm not going to try to sing like Tom York, man. Um, but that's what this song is. So I would, I would, I would love to see another cut of that with the original radio head version while those decisions are being made. I wonder if they tried that. That would have been kind of cool if it changed at the end. And instead of hearing the Westworld music, it kind of morphed into the tech Radiohead song. I thought about that while the scene was playing out. But um, yeah, awesome stuff. So let's go over some stuff that we learned that people are going to be talking about and already are on the Facebook page and whatnot. Hello. Hello. Yeah, he dropped out for a sec. All right, cool. Oh, okay. Hey, hey, I'm back. I'm keeping it in, baby, because I'm recording. So it's, it's just, I just that was like, hello. I like that. Um, I felt that like I felt the presence of solo here. Um, okay, Dolores is Wyatt. I think that was pretty evident. Um, you know, Kim kind of gave a good explanation and talked about that, and you talked about that. That was awesome. Where you kind of got it right, Tim, where you said they mixed them. You know, like she, and then you had an idea that she might look down and see herself as a man or something. But in a sense, though, programming level, you kind of, you were on the right track there. Yeah. I mean, it, it just, it, it, you know, worked out that way. I, I, you know, I can't really take too much credit. You know, I, it was just some wild theory we were discussing, but um, it was cool. Like that was, that was very, very cool. The way that they introduced that, the way they did it, like it was all stuff that, even if we didn't hit the nail on the head, we, we discussed it in some form or another that like all these things were, we were, we were in the right, on the right trail. Like we were, we were, you know, sniffing the right clues out. And I, I like that. And we all had different ideas. And w- what we brought last week was f- so much fun that like, it got me watching the episode thinking like, Oh wow. You know? Oh yeah. It's, you know, like this is coming from this way. And that's the idea of the theory cast. So I hope you guys, you know, still tune in here, even though it's, a guy writing articles about killing theories and stuff. <laughs> we, you know, like we're branded the theory cast. So it's, you can't like blame us. Like, be like, Oh my God, hey, you guys listen, just keep talking, man. Let me just tell you the day after I changed the name of the podcast, we had like tons of news. So people like the theory. Look, I, I was in journalism for 10 years. I have a journalism degree. It's about getting clicks. It's about getting eyes, but it's also about expressing ideas and, some person could write that article one week and the next week they take a different stance and write another article. You know, it's not uh, like, a, uh, you know, don't let's not kill the messenger here. I, no, I'm, I, I'm I, just I, talking about if there's, if there is a community like that is like, yeah, oh my God. they like it. We all know that everybody reads it and is like, okay, whatever. Uh, you know, Bill is, yeah. uh, Billy is, so, uh, what's his name? M-I-B. So the, pr- <laughs> the program yeah like that was cool like and it was dropped at us like almost like they knew 
like, all right, hey guys, you guys been beating this, to, you know, on Reddit and and in podcasts, to, to, you know, beating the dead horse here. It is what it is, but the way they did it was so cool. Like it, it really was like a standalone movie. Like you're just finding out all these details and the way he describes it, you're like for a second you're like it could it be logan is it the way and then he just like goes back into like the first person story of it yeah. and, and ah it was so good and all the all the acting was not like turned up to like 12 yeah and they didn't you know uh the dolores is wyatt thing it made perfect sense i don't feel like that's a huge reveal i feel like if you were watching along you would have had you could have had that idea maybe you weren't like so sold on it but it makes perfect sense. Um, the the uh, William is MIB. We've been saying that and a lot of other people have. It makes sense. It makes sense for the story. I was a little disappointed at first at kind of how almost how maybe shallow the MIB story turned out to be. In a way, he was a red herring yeah but or it was almost as he was like the litmus test for a lot of ford stuff like Mm. he kept coming coming back all the time and he's like all right if it works to this level and this level and he's any oh no that's a good point you're right he was uh, yeah he was a tool of ford yeah, it, it, and when we i can't wait to rewatch it but rewatching it thinking down that ford technically if if he wrote all this stuff for Maeve and Bernard and for Maeve to bring locate Bernard and revive Bernard. Like this whole thing is, was a concocted in Ford's brain to perfection. If this was like really how it worked out. And it seems, you know, until we, you know, nitpick it and, and find out like, like, you know, we might be missing something here or there, but like Ford was, genius in the way he did this and knowing that it was going to come down to him being ousted to having a final plan in motion it was beautiful yeah see now i i do have a bone to pick with that because i'm still i still think that the conversation i shouldn't say i still think that arnold is a program and he's alive within the host and the park and i think that the little conversation that Bernard and uh, Ford had, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, had in the church uh, where Bernard says that, he says, you didn't reintroduce the reveries, Arnold did. Arnold's been doing this the whole time, you know, and Ford kind of laughed, kind of, kind of got a glint in his eye and looked at him. Well, I must be going. You know, and I think that that Ford, it's not just the host that needed that time to evolve and to learn and to remember and to have the experiences and the time that would make that memory mean something, right? It was also Arnold was coming awake. And I still believe that. Oh, I do too, hundred percent. I, I think, but I think that that is Maeve. I'm not so sure that Ford did the any of the Maeve stuff. Yeah, but it would. It, it, how how would he have not like w- bugged out when he saw B- Bar- uh, uh, Bon Arnold uh, uh, Bernard alive? Because again? he knew he was working with Arnold. They were working together. This was so their final... once he was once it was revealed to Ford, then he can enact the final chapter. Maybe that was like Ford's cue. Like uh, once he realized what's going on, that then it was time to go. I think that it. I think that it may have begun with Maeve a year ago, both for Ford and MIB. That Ford that that kind of was the signal. The writing was on the wall that they were ready. That's some heavy stuff. It's really awesome. Like, because this is going to be the good stuff to like really delve into about the the you know the AI stuff, like the heavy duty stuff when they were ready. Like that, this is awesome. Initial reaction, baby. I, I'm still processing it. I just finished watching a half hour ago, and this is heavy duty when you well, really break it down. 
and excuse my coughs here, guys. Initial reaction, so I'm not going to try to edit all this out so we can get it. I'll just turn away from the mic, but I, I'm battling a little cold here. But um, I, I do think that, man. I, I think that I don't know if we'll ever directly know that, though I'm guessing we will, and this is a reason why Bernard was um, kind of brought back into it and onto the team and why Ford kind of just saw him when he said, oh, hello, Bernard. Um, thank you for joining us or whatever. Is I just think that he maybe by the time Maeve did it, he knew. Or maybe he was just observing what was going on with her. Um, but when it says Arnold in the in the command line... It's possible that, you know, we could go so many different ways and you could say that that's just Ford's way of kind of leaving, you know, Arnold in the code, like giving him attribution. But that last conversation is what seals it for me, is that he was basically saying to Bernard, yeah, you're right. Arnold is alive. And then when you think about that stuff that I've been talking about this whole season, where like all of a sudden the maze is everywhere and blah, 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 you know, and like the little boy said, Arnold told me to kill him. It's like he Ford knew that this was the maturation of that. Right. It was time. He and, was, which leads me to believe that in further seasons, maybe we will get, kind of Bernard trying to become Arnold again. Yeah, that's cool, man. Holy shit. But the What's choice that? stuff you talked about was great with Maeve. Whether it's Arnold or Ford, both Dolores and Maeve had to make that choice themselves in their final choice. Yeah, I mean, even well, uh, Arnold, Arnold, Bernard whispered the violent delights thing. So yeah. I don't, I don't think it would be him triggering it. Right. Cause that seemed to be the trigger that got Arnold killed by her. Was no, when that he was remembered. Set. He remembered him saying that, but no one had to say it this time. It was just, but how did he remember if Arnold or the only people who knew were Arnold, Dolores, Teddy, <coughs> excuse me. But I guess if Dolores knows, then, then they all know. Are they going to start working like a more of a hive mind like that? Yeah, like one network. Yeah, yeah. That's there's so and and hey, you too, where you were saying this whole thing is setting up future world samurai world, baby. Yo, that was cool. I would definitely love to see a whole like samurai Dude, season. That would be my number one choice, man. I love that stuff. Or spaghetti, spaghetti western, where they really. Go full on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We could, yeah, then maybe they'd be in Italy. They could infuse the two. There you go. Um, well, right? Pasta is uh, uh, from China. Wait, what? This is getting Sa- wrong. That's Japan. Samurai <laughs> Japanese, dude. I know. I'm just kidding, dude. <laughs> well, it is an island. Maybe. I know. I'm it's just, Japan. I know. I'm just playing that. I'm just talking like we're talking theories or something. No, nah, um, it's crazy. No, but really, like when we, it, it could go. I can't wait to discuss yeah. it later later on how far it could go. Well, we're right. Well, well, we're here, DJ. So how far could it go? I mean, it, it could go as far as the a- AI taking over everything, the entire island, and eventually figuring out a way off and mi- mixing themselves in the population. Because Ford did say that, you know, introducing a new birth and something was born somewhere. And we didn't really see it, but we saw them all come. Come. No, that was it. So it was a, it was a mass birth, is what you're saying. Yeah, they I mean, all it's came on. Because... I, I was thinking like maybe like another leader because there was in, like like mentions of God. Um, no, and... I, I think I think. Well, hey, you know what? I shouldn't say no because maybe they're going to play that out in some way. But I think what that just means is creation. It's like Ford said: "There's no God." Like that picture, the God is us. We've got to take responsibility and control of our own lives. Yeah, that was perfect. That 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 whole uh, metaphor there, I love that. Yeah, and when when Dolores was sitting across from herself, we talked about that a couple episodes ago about how that part when he says that, what 
he says, but you've got to do that. And it's like, what do I have to do? It's like, you, you're the key. You know, Dolores was the key. She had to find herself. And then she did. And she made that choice to follow through. She knew she had to kill Ford in front of all them and take them all out. And somebody called that too. I saw on Reddit. It was pretty cool that in one of the pictures, when Ford is standing over the new narrative, you see like a bunch of board members surrounded by, um, uh, the, uh, native Americans. Really? Yeah. Uh, that's cool. Good catch. Yeah. This show is fun. I mean, it, it, it definitely put, you know, set us up for this, what we love to do. So I, I, I'm so glad this show came on. I love doing this stuff. I love the mystery. I love the science fiction. Uh, the, and I mean, they, they got great actors. Like this could have been done with like, you know, nobodies. They got some real heavy hitters. And even the, the people that we, you know, as Americans aren't too familiar with that I'm sure come from like pretty good shows across the seas. Um, these guys were really good too. Like I enjoyed almost everybody in the show. I didn't, I mean, Oh man, Charlotte was smoking hot in this episode. Oh, I love her. Um, but like, no, even, even, uh, size more like, like, you know, like he, he was kind of like, Oh, okay. I have a question about that. All right. Size more. Here we go. <coughs> Sorry. It's all right. Uh, where's Abernathy? Is he amongst those, He's kind of walking around amongst all of them, and he's got 35 years worth of data stuffed in him. Or did he get on that outgoing train? Because remember, Sizemore, she told him, don't you have something to continue and go do? Yeah, but that's what it made me think. Was he going down there to get him? But why would he go down there to get him when he said he already did it, right? So why did he go back down there? Yeah, it's true. It was that was it. Yeah, that was a, a little bit. Well, they did say they had an abnormality down there, but would they, they wouldn't send him down there. Remember, they said there was a heat signature or something. Yeah, so, well, that was when the Mave thing was happening. Yeah, that was a little weird. I'll have to, you know, we're not going to get everything, but um, oh, I have no, to say. No, definitely not. We'll be way wrong on this, ca- this cast. This is the initial reaction, yeah. baby. And speaking of wrong, I was wrong. I did have the whole idea of MI, like the last scene being MI, William dies and MIB is alive and he's a host. And that's what I meant a little bit by I thought his story was shallow, but in a way I, I, I still liked it. It didn't, it wasn't like too disappointing. It was just, I thought he would be more connected, but his really was an emotional story. Yeah. Like I love the, I the like scene that. when where he connects and goes, you know, like Dolores, you still, I forget the exact phrasing, um, but he's, you know, he's like, he's like, you really remembered and like he was touched by that for a second and then then like reality settled set in and then he remembered that scene where she kind of broke his heart and it wasn't her fault it was this place's fault and this you know these computers fault and i think that drove him mad so now we couple that with the backstory that he really gave it, it sounds real possible that he was never in love with his wife because of this you don't know if Logan got out and told her, uh, we don't know any of that stuff. So like she could have just, he could have just married her for, you know, to, to, to make sure he had this company really not love her. And she knew it the whole time and she killed herself for it. And like, now he's ready to die. Like it really was a heavy story, even though it was kind of like simple and, you know, it was pathetic. Yeah. In a lot of ways it was pathetic, you know? Um, I, yeah, I, and that story, I guess, was true that he told. And he didn't love Dolores. People were saying, why would he treat her like that? Oh, he's trying to free her and everything. No, really. He just wanted to be a murdering son of a bitch for real and have there be a consequence to it. You know, he wanted like mommy to punish him. You know, it was a very sadomasochistic desire that he had and it was uh obsessive and strange and in the end he was more of a weirdo than ford was ford is kind of a hero and i wish i had stuck more with that idea yeah but Um, he got so creepy he he made you believe it yeah that's what's great about this show it's awesome well in order to concoct a plot in which you know that you're gonna die at the end you've got to be a little unhinged and he was 
kind of losing it. But, you know, that is one thing is that it didn't get into any of that, a, a lot of the other stuff and theorizations that people had made as far as genetic changes and people being part robot and maybe everybody's a robot. I, I kind of like that they didn't go cr- out there like that. I think that's going to evolve with the show. But I think that's what they're trying to get out of the park because yeah, that don't that's what they, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, like that's going to change everything once it gets out. And maybe Abernathy got out and, you know, and it will be AI coming in like warrior AI, like battle drone AI coming in to shut down the park. And these guys figured out how to hack them or so, you know, you never know what could come in the future. That's it could be like Terminator, you know, or robots on robots. They're like traveling from park to park because they said they're Samurai Park. And then also Maeve's uh, daughter is in Park One. Yeah. Uh, What was that? Excuse me. We don't even know what Park One is. Like, are all the parks set up already? Like, oh, it's crazy. That is interesting to me. That was really I love that they just kind of casually did that. Like, I saw the the um the logo and I was like, what the heck is SW? And then I saw the samurai and I was like, Oh my God, it's samurai world. I was like, Holy shit, yo. And then when she, when Maeve said, what is this? And he was like, it's complicated. I was like, that's great. I like that. They just kind of slid through that, you know, and didn't like kind of dive deeper into it. I like the way they're unfolding this story. And I'm interested to see now that we don't have how much longer will they play with the idea of real memories that these hosts have these real memories. I think Um, it's got to go in the computer direction. I I think it's going to phase out the humanity part of most of this. I think it's going to go forward with a lot of the, the, you know, the AI coming alive and consciousness yeah, of computers. Yeah. Like not go, not do another another season when they're in two different time periods. Yeah, I don't think so. I I, I hope okay. not. I mean, unless it's done a different way, you know. I I I can't say these guys are so creative that it's it's almost you know be so hard for me to predict how they're going to do it. Yeah, I mean, because you do. I mean, that's kind of the reason why I'm hip to that Arnold being a program thing. That because their memories are real, he exists within them, and he may them so is it like you know i i i still think they're gonna go for that voltron thing where they kind of come together and make arnold again and kind of bring him back in order to find that final way to get out of the park or whatever the next step is but then it's like why do they need him but i like that they have bernard on the team still you know i think that that's pretty cool um, they are set, setting this up for kind of a park to park romp, freeing everyone. Um, but that could get kind of gimmicky, you know. But it's like, she, they also said Bernard said there's only a handful of them. So there's, you know, like Maeve and, and Dolores and Teddy, like they could be, and and Bernard, like they could only be a few maybe that are going to have access, and they'll be like head programmers of the other ones maybe until they can figure out the next generation, how to, how to awaken them. See, that's a good idea, right? Is that it would be too soon to free them all. You've kind of got to, you've kind of maybe, and Ford said that to Bernard too. He said, you've got a long way to go and a lot of pain to get there. Yep. Yep. So maybe it's like each, like they, it's going to, they're not going to be ready to do that. So then they go in and replace the humans and kind of, they keep the park running by hosts as an incubator. And as certain hosts wake up, they pull a matrix, you know, and pull them out and then tell them the truth. And then they become part of the team. And then they just keep on doing it until either they figure out a more rapid way to evolve themselves, you know, into consciousness or until they've all woken up. Yeah, man, that's heavy duty. Cause it could go like what, like I often wonder if it gets to that point, why don't they get onto a network and just like run rampant? And like, why do you need a, a human figure? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, if you yeah, have, yeah. At, at, at one point you just become like the brain, you don't need the human figure anymore. Yeah. But the human body is allows for the experience of things that no, I get it. But now these role, you know, the AI are coming alive. That, they might I, that's realize a, yeah. that 
No, that's very, that's definitely a way that they could go. Perhaps that's going to be, you know, the finale of season three where they make that decision, you know? Or but, jump um, through a network and, and learn how to get on the mainland and build these facilities, you know, in the private and now produce themselves on the mainland or something. It yeah. could go crazy. You're right. You're right. Because they could travel anywhere. Because if they could get their mind into the internet... Uh-huh. They can make somebody make them somewhere else and then they wake up and they're there. So they don't even have to or get out of the park. Even the 35 years of Abernathy, if he's out, you know, it's just, it's so cool how many directions they could go. Cool, man. Cool. Well, look, I know we could go on and on, but I'm kind of coughing here and losing it. And this isn't an instant uh, initial uh, quick flash reaction pod. So let's cut it off there and let's, let, I'll just throw it out. Is there any last things that you want to mention? Yeah, I want to mention that you guys are the best fans ever. Well, the second best next to our small council fans, which you should jump onto. But um, yeah, you guys rock. We, we want to hear stuff from you. I don't want to say any more because I got to watch it again and I got to take a little notes and I got to get some feedback from you guys and we got to podcast again. This is a great episode. Thank you, Axel, for again, throwing together a quick, uh, initial reaction cast spur of the moment thing that uh, we had to get out there. This is awesome episode. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Love you guys. Love the podcast. Thank you, brother. Yeah, man. Uh, thank you, DJ Tim Hines. And yeah, we'll keep it going. And uh, I second that. Thanks everyone for listening, downloading. We got a couple new iTunes reviews. I think James and Michael, um, they are coming through. So, Please give us some reviews. It helps us out. Westworld DVR at Gmail, Westworld DVR on Twitter, Westworld Theorycast, our Facebook page. So uh, until then, say howdy to your mom for me. Nice, man. <coughs> that was fun. <laughs>